Today I am going to be reviewing the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Colored Pencils. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. You guys have seen me use these in a couple of pieces in the past where I was mixing them with my Polychromos or my Luminance pencils. I've never used them by themselves though, so I've decided to go ahead and use them by themselves so I can get a good idea of what their strengths and weaknesses are, so I better know when to use them with the other colored pencils. You can get sets up to 72 colors of these. I would definitely prefer them to have more colors. This set, like a lot of colored pencil sets, has a lot more yellows than I think is practical, and not enough browns and tans and grays. That was definitely a drawback for me with these ones. These pencils are quite light fast. Now, the newer sets have the light fast ratings in the tin. Mine is an older tin and it does not have those ratings. So I had to go online to kind of figure out what colors I should pull from my set. I believe there were two in the set that I had to pull. The next thing I wanna point out with these pencils and this is something that I hope that they have improved on in future sets. Eventually I may get a newer set to find out for myself. Let me know in the comments below if you do have a newer set of these, if this has been improved on. But these pencils, the colors are so inaccurate on the back for what the color actually ends up being. It With the blues especially, they're so similar. Good luck figuring out which blue you're reaching for. That was one of the most frustrating things for me while working on these is that they're just too close. So I had to have a scratch piece of paper. Every time I switched colors, I had to scribble on a piece of paper to figure out which color was which because looking at the pencil was not giving me that information. And yeah, the pencils do have marked on them what the color is. I don't have the colors memorized. That's not gonna work for me either. I just wanna be able to quickly look at the pencil and know what color it's going to be. And that was just not possible with so many colors in this. I've yet to use pencils that had the color marked as far off as these seem to be. But again, that is something they could have improved on, so I would love to hear from you guys if that is the case. The next thing I noticed with these is that they are very waxy. While they are an oil-based pencil, they have a lot of wax in there. They felt very much like working with Derwent Color Soft, which surprised me. They didn't layer quite as well as Polychromos or Luminance would. They were closer to Color Soft on that. The difference between these and Color Soft, however, besides that the Color Soft is a wax-based pencil, but these ones blend so well. Like these, getting a blurry background, this is probably going to be my favorite pencil for that. I could not believe how quickly that laid down and I could be super sloppy with the application of the pencil where normally the way that I was working more side to side, I should be able to always see those pencil lines because I was being lazy. You couldn't, they all blended completely out. Had I done that with Polychromos or Luminance, you would have still seen those pencil lines. So that was something I really liked with these. They blended so well. Lyra makes their own colorless blender. This is the Splendor Blender. I have used this before with Polychromos. Someone suggested because of them being oil-based, this is for an oil-based pencil that it would work for those. It didn't work well. I, or at least I should say I wasn't impressed. But with these pencils, because it is made for these, it worked so nicely. And you didn't have to add a lot of pressure to get it to blend well with it. Now, the white in this set was nearly useless, almost as useless as the Polychromos white. So I went ahead and for a lot of this ended up switching over to my Luminance white because this was not pleasant. I wasn't able to get the detail I wanted. And with these, because they don't layer quite as well as some of my other pencils, they're just so waxy feeling that additional layers don't stick as well. I did layer, but not anywhere near what I would get with other pencils. Trying to layer white on top of these was a challenge, so that's where I switched over to my luminance, and I was fairly happy with the results I got there. I did, towards the end, use a new method that I'll be showing you at the end of the video, how to get white dots and highlights on your colored pencil work using colored pencil. So unlike using gel pens or acrylic paints or inks that a lot of people will use that are not going to be archival because those are water-based and you don't want to use water-based products on top of oil-based. This product, however, was meant for this. I was pretty excited with those results. So while it isn't technically Lyra, I'm still really excited to share that with you. That will be coming up at the end of the video. And one of the things that I like so much about my oil-based pencils with Polychromos is that they are a hard lead. You can sharpen that to a super fine point and it does not break. It is so perfect for details. I expected the same with these and I really did not like these for details. I like them for, for blending blurry backgrounds, more like with a wax-based pencil than an oil-based. But for the finer detail, you can sharpen them to a decent point, but if you go too long, if I go as long with these or as fine 
fine of a point with these as I do with the polychromos, the tips would kind of crumble and break as I added pressure. They are not quite as strong as the polychromos, but again, that's part of what makes them blend so well for those blurry backgrounds. But I definitely had a harder time getting fine detail with these than I do with the polychromos. I, when I got to the seahorse especially, the seahorse and the starfish, where I was doing the little detail, I really wanted my polychromos for that. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this seahorse drawing is available for you now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at these in action. I've started with my drawing drawn out on Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper, and I'm laying down my base colors. I just chose one section, a rock that's blurry in the background, and I'm working on that using a lot of blues and purples. I was shocked to see how amazing this stuff blends. I mean, these pencils blend so, so smoothly, even when I'm being lazy with my application. I did fight with the fact that the color saturation wasn't as bold as I would like. It took a lot of layers, but it, because these pencils don't take as many layers as I would like, a lot of this piece was not quite the color that I was going for. I didn't have as much contrast as I wanted in many areas. But it wasn't the end of the world or a deal breaker for me either. So you can see I'm laying down more and look at how messy I'm being with these. You can see my pencil lines all over the place. But once I blend that out, you're not going to see those at all anymore. It worked so well with the odorless mineral spirits. There, we've got that nice, really smooth, deep background. And I'm going to go ahead and layer again. Now that this section has dried, I can add additional layers. And what you can't tell in this video is that I am letting it dry completely in between each layer, or every time that I use the odorless mineral spirits. I'm using a Filbert Taclon bristled brush. Let that dry and I'm layering more over this. Now the black in this set, this one comes with one called medium black. And when I looked online, it looks like there are a couple of different types of black. Hopefully some are gonna be darker because this black I fought with. I wanted to reach for my polychromos black so many times because this black does not get as dark as I would like. So I had to do a lot more layering with the reds and the blues, which I normally would do anyway because I don't want the black to be flat. But this one I really fought with. I was getting more of a dark, dark gray than I really was the black that I wanted in many of the areas of this piece. So the black, or at least this one that was labeled medium black, and I think they may have changed the name of that one because again, this was an older set, but I was not a huge fan of that black pencil. So we're gonna go ahead and add some detail here. And the same thing, I'm just layering on top of layering. And for the most part, my entire background and the starfish are all the same colors. They're all various blues and purples. I don't want too much detail on this starfish in the background. This guy's supposed to be out of focus so that the one in front really stands out, being that they are the same color. I blurred this even more than what my reference photo was for the one in the background because the one that's in the foreground kind of blended in with the one in the background or behind it, given that they are the same colors. So I kept it pretty soft, and you'll see as I blend out with the odorless mineral spirits, I blend over everything. I'm not worried about trying to keep the details. I want the odorless mineral spirits to kind of fuzz everything up. So while that is drying, I'm working on the next rock. I've put a base layer down of this soft green tone, and now I'm layering my blues, blacks, and a bit of the burgundy into this. Now when I do sea life or rocks and stuff like that, I'm not worried about every little detail being exact to the reference photo. I just need to keep create the same texture that that reference photo has. So you don't need to stress yourself out thinking, oh my gosh, it's so much detail. I can't copy it all exact. Just go for close. As long as you're getting that texture built up where it's similar, then you should be fine. You don't have to have every little detail in something like this exact. And it's the same thing with the starfish. My starfish wasn't exact. I had to create the texture but not, it doesn't have to have every little detail the same in order to look like the same, same starfish. And with something like this, with rocks especially, no one is going to know the difference if you've got a little black smudge two inches off. I mean, it really doesn't matter. So again, I'm creating the texture. So I, you can see I went on top of that with some white dots just to create more depth, more dimension in that rock. And at that point, I was using the white out of the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor set, but I did not like that white at all. 
very similar to how I feel about the polychromos white. They just aren't opaque enough. So shortly after this, I switched over and started using my luminance white which worked much better. I tried the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. That didn't stick as well. These pencils are, feel so waxy to me. The Derwent Drawing Chinese White was too soft and it just wasn't sticking. And I suspect that these pencils would work really well with a paper that has a little bit more tooth as well. That would probably give you the ability to get a lot more layering done. And because they blend so well, they may still give you a smooth look. I need to test that out. You can see I've got a really strong shadow underneath that back arm of this starfish so that it really stands forward from the one behind it. And I'm going to hype that up even more. Because these are the same colors, I've got to depend on two things here. One, how much detail I'm putting in the starfish up front. He needs a lot more detail than the one behind. And my contrast. I need to have a much higher contrast against the light starfish behind it in order for this guy to stand out. A lot of what I'm doing for the texture of the starfish's arm are just various dots and squiggles. Not random. I'm not just putting polka dots and scribbles all over the place. I'm being very careful about where they go. But you can see here, those are mostly little dots and ovals. This is just building up and creating that texture. Not worrying about every little line being exact here. With something like this and with these pencils, I found that they are not the best for fine detail. I'm not sure if it's because they don't layer as well or that they don't sharpen to, well, they do sharpen to a fine point, but they don't hold that point well. The, the tips kind of crumble if you put much pressure, if you've got a really, really sharp point on these. They're not like the polychromos, which are a much harder core. These do have a tendency, you have to watch that you don't push too hard if you've got a long tip on them. But they definitely did not get the kind of detail that I'm used to with my polychromos. On the flip side, they did so good with the blurry backgrounds that I can see where they would both have their place and work so well together. I've used them together in the past and loved them. So here I'm coming on top with that luminance white and adding more details, more little dots to create again that texture. And this is just a layering process. I'll do a layer, I'll blend it out, do another layer, blend it out. The first few layers are going to look like I drew them with my feet. That's normal. You just keep layering until you get it how you want it. As long as you're not pushing too hard, you should be able to get enough layers to do that. Now, it is more difficult with these because they don't layer as well, but they also lay down really, really fast, so that sort of makes up for it. These were a pencil that I sort of loved and hate it at the same time. There were things that were so amazing about them and then things when I try to do detail. It was just kind of a big fluffy nope. Like it was just not getting the detail that I wanted. They can do detail, it's just not what I'm used to with my polychromos. But at the same time, like I said, they had things that were so great about them that I can definitely see why a lot of artists love these pencils. There's a lot to love about them. And they do lay down very fast. So if you're someone who does not want to spend as much time as I typically do, making layer after layer after layer, these, you're not going to need as many layers. It, it does go down a lot faster. And really, a lot of this, I think that I would have been happy if I could have just added my black polychromos to it. And I guess there's no reason for me not to have, given that I cheated and used the white luminance anyway, but that's normal for me to have to use a, the different white with any colored pencil. That luminance is the only one that I really, well, that and the Derwent drawing are the only ones that I really get the opacity that I want with. But I, yeah, I was definitely very surprised with that black. If you use the black polychromos, if you have the set, I would say pick up a black polychromos for your fine detailing just to get your edges and your shadows. And when I say that, I know a lot of people are going to think, well, you're not supposed to use straight black. Well, no, but if you put the black polychromos down first, you can put another color over it to get the richness that you need, but it will definitely be a little bit easier for some of the tiny, tiny detail. So for here on these pebbles, I'm missing a big clip of this, but you'll get the gist. The big thing to notice when you do little pebbles like this, in order to keep the perspective right, notice that my shapes are mostly oblong, like horizontal. I don't have a lot of pebbles that are going more lengthwise vertical. They, you want them to look like they're flat. And so you get them to where they're a little bit more oval, a little bit more horizontal stretched out horizontally than they would be stretched out vertically. Makes a big difference. But I just blocked in all of the colors that I wanted, blended out with the paint thinner, remember to turn my video camera back on, and then kept building up my 
layers at this point. You can see I'm just better defining the colors that I have in here. This is another area. I am not copying my reference photo exactly at all. It's actually not even that close. I just need to create similar texture. So we're going to move on to the seahorse. You can see these pencils do get a fine point. They just not as much as the polychromos that I'm used to with that. So this is another area that it's going to look like I drew it with my feet. It's going to be very fuzzy and not defined at all. That is okay, it's just for my base layer. Now I've gotta make sure that I pull the colors from my background into the seahorse. Normally I would say if you introduce a new color, in this case oranges and reds, you wanna make sure that they are in other pieces, parts of your painting or drawing. The thing is here, I don't want those oranges and reds in the background. They really wouldn't work. So I've got to do the reverse. I need to pull a lot of the purples and blues into the seahorse. These are two different reference photos that I used. And so I've got to alter this to make them fit. So I'm going to start pulling a lot more of the blues and purples than this reference photo called for. But at the same time, I want to make sure that he also looks like he's got the oranges and yellows in there. I don't want to just change his color completely. I just need that background reflecting and pulled into the colors used on the seahorse. So like always, I am just blocking in my general shapes. I'm not too worried about the tiny detail just yet. Kind of looks like a rainbow exploded on him. Blended that out with the odorless mineral spirits. And while that dries, I will move on to the next section. Again, not too worried about the little detail, just blocking in my color, getting a base color on here. They really focused the oranges more on the back end of the seahorse. On the reference photo, his belly was very pale, a very, very light, yellow and so I've switched that over and this is where I really pulled in more of the blues and purples. I'm going to loosely block in just like that on the whole body and lost a clip again. I then went through, it's the same thing though, I just loosely blocked everything in, blended it out and then started refining detail. You can see that I've come through and added little dots. These are purple dots to start getting a lot of the detail in here. Now the reference photo called for a lot of white dots and that was not something I was going to be able to do with the, I mean, that's hard to do with white and colored pencil anyway, but because the white doesn't layer well, any white does not seem to layer that well over these pencils, I needed to come up with a solution. My friend Aliona Nicholson from brushandpencil.com showed me how to do this a few months ago and I hadn't tried it until now. So I'm taking the colored pencil titanium white along with the colored pencil touch-up texture. This comes out of the set, the powder blender set, but you can get just these two items by themselves and they can be shipped internationally. You just need to email the company uh, or their website and they will give you shipping costs. I know shipping gets pretty expensive to send things internationally, I know that firsthand, but if you can get friends that want to buy some or you buy a couple of them, it's not as bad. So I'm going to mix these together. I am using a synthetic hog hair liner brush mixing the liquid and the powder. And this is one of the happiest things that has happened to me in a very long time. I don't get out much. But watch the detail that I'm able to get with this. Seriously, so excited. If you follow me on Facebook, you've seen this video already. But look how I can add these white dots. Yeah, I know this is a Rembrandt, a Lyra Rembrandt review, but I was not going to be able to finish this and have it have the dots and the, the detail that I wanted. So... I needed to come up with a way to get the white in here. And you can see I can just paint in all of these details. This is ridiculously exciting to me because a lot of artists will use gel pens or acrylic paint or white ink. The problem with those is that they're not archival. They are not meant to go on top of a wax or oil-based colored pencil. So you can have problems later on down the road. This is meant for colored pencil. It was designed specifically for this medium. So it works so perfectly for getting those white highlights that we were not otherwise able to do without using products that were not going to be archival. And it sticks so well. I've used gel pens before and they don't always stick as well. This does. This is, again, because it's meant for this. 
Can you tell I'm really excited? I'm stumbling over my words. I sound like a walking advertisement. I just was so excited about what this means for future work. Whenever I do marine life, I always need to do white dots for the fins. That's how I get the fins to have that iridescent look. But I was not able to achieve that in the past with colored pencil, and now I can. We will be able to do stars easily. You can flick this paint just like you would acrylic paint on a stiff brush so that you get the look of stars, that splattered look detail on sea foam. I mean, the possibilities are endless and what a difference this would make. Whiskers. The other really great thing I found with this is you can see that these dots are really, really white. Well, once it dried, I was able to take a little bit of blue and go over some of them to tone them down and the white stayed put. So it basically worked like glazing the white if the white is too bright. So you can tint that color a little bit if you need to. Look at all these little white dots. So excited. Although I guess most of you guys are colored pencil artists too, so you will probably be, or at least understand my excitement here. And I would definitely recommend the synthetic hog hair liner brush over a Taclon bristled liner brush. I think a Taclon bristled liner brush would be too soft and the bristles would just kind of flop over given how stiff I've got this mixture. Just adding those little white highlights and look how it pushes that seahorse forward. It definitely brings him closer to the viewer and having these white highlights. We'll speed that back up so you can see what a difference this makes. And then I ended up going a little bit crazy and originally I was just going to put the white dots on the fins and on the tail where it called for. I ended up putting highlights around the face. I sharpened up edges. I used it all over the place. I even added a little bit to some of the live rock and the starfish in the background. Look at how nice those highlights look. Put a little bit of detailing on the rocks, which you couldn't really see because I was working off camera. You're welcome for that. See how I sharpened up those edges. I had to watch myself because it would be really easy to go overboard with this, but even if I did, I can go back over it with colored pencil without messing things up. A little bit more texture on the starfish, which pushes him forward even more from the one behind it. It really helped me to get more of a three-dimensional look that I was going for. So in the end, if someone asked me if they should get the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Colored Pencils, if I think it's worth it, yeah, I really liked them. I like them, again, with the Polychromos, but if you're just getting started, this is a less expensive pencil than a lot of the other ones that I use, and it's a decent pencil. It is one that I think you can learn a lot from, and they are mostly very light fast, so yeah, definitely would say this is a good one to pick up. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this tutorial, complete with voiceover, is available for you now. So make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. People are texting me while I'm trying to work. For those of you who wondered how my trip to the Dallas Aquarium was, here is your answer. I got so many great photos of different fish. We'll be seeing a lot of those in the future. Going there almost made me want another reef tank. And then I remembered all the work it takes to do water changes and cleaning. And then I thought about having to drag all of that salt water up this many flights of stairs and said, nope, I'll just stick to my hermit crabs. They're crustaceans. It's kind of an ocean animal and they need salt water, so.